leaving more 80 carries left in the pool. So even had you banned up the Aphelios, so it would have just left an easy Varus pick for the side of EDG. So I like that they, they like kind of change waves on that one. But EDG saying, hey, the pivotal point in game one, we had the Jays. Pivotal point in game two, they were able to do a much better job of contending in that mid game because they also had Jays power spikes to be able to play around, even if Hai Chao wasn't necessarily the biggest factor. So I like it. They're going back to comfort to get their hands on this. But it does open up that Varus pick that we highlighted that EDG had banned in game one and game two. Okay, so the other fact that it's open means it adds a bit of range here is Meteor with Jarvan. I mean, the only player we've really seen play consistently is Ning, but Meteor, he has a fun champion pool. Skarn and Zach have already come out in the league, and as he hovers around this a little bit more, you can see Meteor wants a certain direction. And look, it might not be that different from champs we already have, but it's locked in. And I wonder, maybe trying to force them into like an Ezreal or something, because right, typically you'd pick this up after seeing like multiple immobile lanes and wanting to contend with that early game pressure coming out. But maybe trying to force them into a bot lane matchup that maybe is less than ideal and, and, and can have LPC and Jinja once again be in a, a strong point of power and contention for this one. For EDG, though, so far going to keep it stock and standard to bring out the Maokai. Maokai has been incredibly strong, but no. So it seems like not going that route. They are going to just say, hey, we know you picked Jarvan. We're still going to go with the Aphelios into you and try to have one of the top tier marksman pick in this meta. Leave great on the fellows as well. Be interesting to watch bottom line yet again here as we decipher what High Chow wants to pick up. Looks like they want to get an early mid pick. Uh, instead of partnering something with the support, that would mean we have no supports locked in and a lot to ban away. Uh, High Chow on Azir. Okay. This is something we've seen a couple of times so far. Hasn't been Ooh. his most successful, but changes it for the LeBlanc in the last second. And, you know, I was talking about High Chow's champion pool at the start lyric. I counted three, six, nine, twelve. This is his 13th unique champion. And it's something that gives him a lot of agency, a lot of proactivity. We've already seen him pull out some things like the Ari, which he, he did manage to find a win on. He's been someone who's played the Tristana, has played the Syndra, like these other, I'd say, more aggressive champions in that mid lane. So doing a nice job also fits very well. You have, like, pick potentially have the ability to follow up with the Jarvan. But also we know LeBlanc's play pattern also suits very well with, like, positioning her with other long range and other, like, poke-oriented champions. So you can just whittle them down with your distortion over a wall, maybe go in, throw out a uh, Q, and just look to take control of objectives that way. And a lot of engaged support bans coming on out would be expected. We don't really have... You don't have, like, the expected enchanter pairing, like, 80 carries out. Like, sure, you can still go with things like a Lulu, especially when you have, like, an Aphelios online. But I think supplementing it with more engage or, obviously, LGD's case, we're going to take away that Thresh because of the safety of a Lantern makes a lot of sense. Well, Lulu on top of that as well. I mean, Thresh is something for Mako. Let's just talk historically, Lyric. One of his better champions. Like, Mako is a fantastic Thresh. Him and Ming really capitalize on the engage supports in the LPL, and that's why Nautilus are also banned away from Jin Zhao. Could be alluding to something that Mako's willing to trade away. Leon is still available. Uh, what else are we going down the, the rabbit hole with? Uh, I'm actually really interested to see myself, because even those, like, haven't been too strong in the meta. We obviously, like, you know, we've seen since moving on, like, things like Annie kind of still rearing their heads, but kind of falling off a little bit. Uh, we still have other Enchanter supports, I guess, if LGD wanted to go that way, of, like, things like... Oh, actually, the I was going to highlight the Karma, but the Karma just being banned, so... I'm interested to see where supports go, or if you even just opt in the top here and wait for a support counterpick, because you still have a lot of, like, safe, blindable champions in the top lane, the Renekton, and the Scion, these types of things that are going to do well, and LGD are just going to go that route and look for a counterpick in that bot lane matchup. Okay, well, that means that LGD will have the final pick then, because... Renekton's already been locked. We get strong solo lanes. EDG. Show us your stuff. Make a great Leona. That's what I'm thinking of here. No one wants to see the fish. No one cares about Nami. Mako does love Annie. I will say, out of any support in the league, he's already played it. It's tied with his most played, actually. And after last game, I think it's going to be his most played uh, as well because Mako, five games of Ash, now five of the Annie as it gets locked in. But Lyric, we know that Jace can also flex, so I think we just have to wait until this final pick. Yeah, it still has been more predominantly in that mid lane matchup, so it does look like mm -hmm. we're just going to end up 
with I even think the Nar here would would actually be fine. You know, you're gonna be able to do well in that isolated one v one up against Renekton, and him doing well depends more on like the jungle intervention that's able to come through. Also having the E to be able to hop away from some of the the engage that Jarvan does bring to the table. And now it's for LGD and where they want to go with like an answer to Annie. I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say uh, I don't really I know what the answer to Annie is gonna be. We get the Soraka coming out so more sustain across the map to be able to set up for these engages also just like a lot of annoyance in that bot lane matchup especially with the silence able to come on through and just play off the range that's there so i'm really excited with what lgd has brought to the table seeing champions like jarvin leblanc soraka kind of brings us to a different time in league of legends like season one or something right like with the old animations i mean yeah annie versus soraka itself is just so old school it's nice to see a refreshing bottom lane, but nice to see that Jin Zhao would pull this out considering that BLG in their last series, if they took down EDG, it's just LGD becoming like the hunter of big name teams this split. I'm really excited to see this bot lane matchup, especially. Annie with Aphelios has been, I think, one of the, the more interesting pairings. You know, you have a lot of range with your autos. I believe it's 650 at the top of my head to play with, which kind of like, yeah. I think, supplements Aphelios in the early game, especially once you get past that, that Calibrum where you do have a lower range. And then at level six, you have so much burst, right? The, the, the stun or like a Tibbers into just a huge Moonlight Vigil, that can just, you know, instantly burst out an enemy team. Jin Zhao gonna look to respond to that by bringing Jin out Jin the Soraka. Look to sustain his AD carry, keep him alive with the heals, with the ulti, and hopefully whittle down uh, Mako and leave. Again, with, with those stars, with that silence. But it's a fun one, a day of interesting drafts. And that's what mm -hmm. you always help for in LPL. That's what you always want. Yeah, you do indeed. But look, for Jin Zhao, getting that star call down further to your point, it's going to be all about the trading here. For the Zorak, remember, you don't get that star call, you don't get the healing. And it means that you get lower yourself using the Astral Infusion to buff up your AD and get the healing onto him. Uh, a lot of exposures in the Zorak lane is Mako already using that 650 range you talked about. And while we get a bit of a, an old, old, old school classic in the bottom lane in the support role, I will go, also got to mention Lyric mid might be set up early here. I'm kind of curious to how Meteor plays around Hightower because LeBlanc Jarvan, bit of an old jungle pairing as well. I Something know. that has great set up there for a bursty kill. Brings me back to like the, the days of, of season three, you know, oh, before yeah. like things like De Deathfire Grass being in meta, having, you know, that on the LeBlanc, the Jarvan True. coming out alongside it, the strong mid jungle 2v2 because Hell, you could use this, potentially blow a flash very early on Fofo. He's now having to play a bit on the back foot in a matchup where he theoretically should be able to surmount some pressure and once he gets a few levels under his belt. And now you have this like roaming duo in the Jarvan and the LeBlanc looking to pressure elsewhere, potentially down to that bot side. And, and the game can really start to break open that way. So when we've been hitting on that LGD's early game so far has really been the thing that's been outshining EDG. If they can use this duo to keep up that momentum, that can lead to a real snowball. Got a bit of a pause though for the meantime, ladies and gentlemen. Snowball being the key word, I think, in this game, we can talk more about that duo. And as you said, a bit of a flashback to season three. Um, I want to point out that if Death by a Grasp was in this in this game now, I think people would be complaining about it 24-7. I don't think we realized how overpowered that item was at the time. 120 AP, and the active was, what, 15% health damage? With like a 60 second cooldown or something? It was some kind of, like it, I can't remember what it was, but you know the damage amplification coming out, you throw that out, you oh, yeah. fall with your ability, you're just able to burst them out. But, you know, that was a different time. I remember that's also when like, Gragas's AP ratios were like, absolutely <laughs> like, nutty. They were, yeah. his like Q and his alt were just, I can't remember what they were, but they were like 1.2 and like 1.6 or, or something like that. And uh, I, those are good times. Those are those are favorable memories in my mind. I remember, uh, was it season four spring especially where like watching, I watched a lot of EU LCS, people like Kerp able to take advantage of those picks along with like Fizz. Dude. Oh yeah. I remember speaking of Fizz, you know, speaking of EU LCS at the time, so as pop. We got, what what meta was Fizz meta top? That was season five summer where we had the Ignite TP it was Fizz, it was Hecarim, and, Hecarim? and yeah. there was one other that I can't remember. Uh, it wasn't good nearly top with Triforce, was it? That, that was also season meta. five. That, that was season uh, five. I think that was before, but oh, it was yeah. either right before or right after when the Nidalee Triforce thing came into line. And that's when we started having like the, the Echo Tops 
with Draftsman, you'd like Echo GP Nar with Season oh, 6. Yeah. Those are days Sunfire. I remember very vividly. So those were yeah. uh, back in the back in the good old coaching days. Oh yeah. When I knew what win. I was talking about. <laughs> you do, you still do. Uh, just a, a side shout out to what we're talking about. JJ, 300 games in the LPL. So congrats to him. Um, 300 games, like, I'm trying to think. How many do you reckon we get through in an LPL regular season? I have no idea, because I'm always, I'm surprised when we see like, players, I'm like, oh my god, this player's been in, only in the LPL for like this like uh, this couple splits. How could it be yeah. so high? But then I'm also surprised when we have a player that's been here for years, and I'm like, how is his number so low? True. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. Then you realize we run like 40, 50 games in a regular season if we go to a lot of game threes as well. 16 series played. You go to 32 games regardless, it could go up to like 40, right? Let's say it's like 40 something on average. In a year, you probably do 80 to 100, depending on how far you get in playoffs. So, uh, Jet Jet, been on the team since 2019 or 2020 when he took over for Clear Love. Uh, uh, yeah, am I getting it right? They went through junglers a bit. They had, they had a mixture of, of junglers for a little bit, and then Jet Jet just kind of became the mainstay. Flag and drag onto the set, man. He might be in trouble. We're talking him up, but High Chow sets him up to take the flash down. Meteor and High Chow already playing around that strength of mid jungle that we highlighted before. And it's great, right? You've been finding Cryo and mid, you've been able to. Like, we have seen High Chow trading HP to be able to manage control of the wave, but utilizing that to allow for Meteor to look for the aggression. Because High Chow, you gotta, you gotta calm down a little bit. As Fofo, still incredibly healthy and having a decent yeah. amount of mana to play with. I mean, again, trying to get that punish through. High Chow luckily to hold on to his summoners there as and Fofo just gets to shove out. We'll get a back out too. I remember that JJ lost his flash in that little exchange. So, small net win for LGD yet again here in the early game. And so far in these series, uh, or this series rather, LGD have been stomping early games. They've been doing really well. And yet again, Lyric, let me just say that Xiaoshu in the Renekton matchup this early is winning lane yet again. Yeah, we didn't see how the first few levels went, but a lot of it's supposed to be about like what we see all of you here, kind of Shaoshu utilizing his Q, walking up, taking some damage to push out the wave, and Nala trying to find the trades, like in return, using that that range and kind of tethering him right on the edge. But it's been the opposite side of the map where we've seen a lot of focus so far because uh, LG got some great wards around bot side and around mid. EDG just cleared them out with Mako kind of making making the rounds through the jungle. Yeah. And still gonna be spotted though. So LGD having some information to play with potentially for Meteor to look to make his next move. We highlighted a lot about mid, especially now Fofo, very far forward. But it's about making sure your bot lane's in a fine state since you do have a very like squishy bot lane matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, trying to free up High Chow. Flag and drag to come through here. Meteor's gonna make himself known as uh, Fofo holds onto the flash. Very well done. High Chow not getting up the chains as well. So that makes a difference, but Still, Fofo holds his nerve, and I think if we're talking about holding nerve in the series, Fofo has been, I guess, one of the more stable players alongside Mako so far. You know, Leave has been psychotic at some moments, and JJ and Ale sometimes have just been on different pace. Yeah, it's been... Leave, Leave being the aggressive one in the forefront has, has definitely been the thing to take. And Ala, obviously getting... Honestly, just outdone. Shafshu has been the better yeah. top laner in top the series team, yeah. so far. Uh, the other members of LG, EDG having to be the ones to step up. So far off to a fine game. Remember last game was a lot of EDG trying to force the action at windows where it didn't necessarily feel like they needed to look for action. So hopefully going to be doing better this time around. As uh, having things like the Aphelios to be able to play through leave some great damage later on. Here we go again. Top lane continues to be a fun bonanza. Arla down 7 CS. We've found a bit of a pick here, but it's only to punch Meteor out of the way. JJ, no flash, remember, so looks like Meteor wants to continue getting in his face as Control Ward is continuously being controlled. Fofo not getting the Shock Blast. And like EDG are just being controlled through this early game again. And Lyric, it's a great time to talk about what happens if LGD win. Because if LGD win, they move to five. They have four series left. They can make nine. If LGD get the playoffs this split, I will just be amazed. If LGD gets the playoffs this split, let it be known his stairs will shave his head. No, 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 no. I will go clean shaven beard. I am not shaving my head before the wedding. 
I am okay. not that crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. What if, what if LGD beat Top yeah. Esports next next series? Because that, that's their next series, right? They beat now BLG. If they beat EDG, they then go into Top Esports. That would be an insane three, three you know, streak for three. Okay. If LGD make playoffs, pick a champion and I'll get it tattooed on my body somewhere. Oh no! What like is, legit, what is, I'll say that right now. I don't. I have no fear. I, I. This first, this team is versing top esports. I don't want this Surely, power. I right? do not want this power right now. Is you know what? You know what? We'll, we'll sit on that. We'll let. We'll, <laughs> no, not we'll, Scarta. We'll, we'll, we'll let the, we'll, we'll let that one like simmer in your head for a little bit, and you know, I'll give you the chance to rethink it because we see JJ going on to high chow. Well, I have faith that this game might be looking good. However, High Chow's taking the big burst. He gets out with the Cataclysm. Finding a smart Meteor with the Flag and Drag Re-Engage. Gets the end of JJ. I can't no believe flash. that hit, but it's perfect. In comes Xiao Shu. First Blood not give it over to him, but Meteor takes it. LGD's early games, man. Maybe it is worth a tattoo. Me <laughs> Meteor didn't even need to use a Flash in that circumstance either. Both Popo and JJ having to expend theirs. And we pan back to bot lane, where LGD's domination continues, whittling down, getting these turret plates, and utilizing this range and this poke that they have available to them. So, Herald on top side, plates and bot side. We're gonna jump right into a replay and see how it's done. No vision, forcing their way in to want to try and contend with this Scuttle Crab. And JJ, they're hoping to find Haichao, but still on the little block, he's incredibly mobile. Cataclysm forces out the flash from JJ. A flag and drag forces out the flash from Fofo. And then he's just able to run JJ down from kind of staying too close in range. Ala not able to follow up. The Shaoshu was the one with pressure able to follow first. Oh, he turned it. Oh my god, he's turned it. Slice and dice is still available. Big question there. The Fury Bars stacked again. Shaoshu has flash. Now, hold on me. All it takes is a bit of a ruthless predator moment, and Ala's dead, but he's got Megana coming up. And they were kind of scared that Shaoshu was going to bring that back into 2v1. Playing it respectfully, Allah's Narbar was stacking up, so could have been risky. Oh, as well. oh got him as he backed away. Meganar's used slice and dice there. Shao shoots out, run out of the reign of anger, but Meteor's coming Allah's, in. Allah's flash. Well, flash can be met by Jarvan, but he wants the wave push up because Herald's in his back pocket, so give some of that gold to Shao Shu. Also got hit by the sapling, so getting slowed down, so not able to follow through with the potential gank that they wanted to find. You hit the nail on the head, wanting to get this turret in top set. I'm surprised he didn't go for bot when it is only left on three plates. But hell, we've seen enabling Shaoshu in the series has led to success. So True. I'm not going to doubt LG on this one this time. 20 CS lead. Again, Arlo, what is happening this series? Maybe, I, I don't know, is it the arms? He's, he's got the stretchy bands on. That's the obviously a physio thing. I've never fully understood it, but... Maybe I should use some of those, get my wrist going. If Bofo's pulled out, he had no flash and burner before. Pike Chow just has to connect the chain, a chain, a chain. Where is the Fleetwood Mac chain? Pike Chow not getting the combo down. Bofo sits in a chamber himself and just survives it out. Manages to be able to get away. So even though pressure's been kept up, not able to translate it into any more kills just yet. Still, 2,000 gold lead for LGD. So doing a nice job of bringing this one forward. Later on, they are relatively squishy. Like Meteor will be the front line and you're kind of reinforced even more by having the Soraka to like allow not only the Jarvan, but uh, Renekton who plays a lot off of sustain to just be able to continuously tank damage the longer and longer a fight goes on. It's gonna be a lot up to Lee being able to get big and strong. He's, they've done fine in laning phase. Like sure, they've lost some plates, but in terms of CS, they have managed to keep up just fine so far. And they're at that point we talked about. Level 6, where the burst can come out with the Tibbers, with the Moonlight Vigil, to be able to set them up. But what's happening in the top line? Megan are going to be used, not against the wall, but still Xiaoshu could dodge away from the pillar at the end. It's all over because Dragon is now started, but Arla has TP, and he's got the health bar advantage as well. Elgin, he's still good with the Gazette, the Flag and Dragon X, Change Corruption. Max Range grabbing him with the Moonlight Vigils. Bofo to the skies, he shouts, but LPC running out of mana means all good for EDG. They move to turn, and Flag and Drag follows through, but Meteor doesn't get the end connection. Even with the kill, Hightail's now in trouble as EDG have found themselves a winning fight, found themselves a dragon. It might be a bit of a trade, but the objective in their back pocket is something they can walk away with.
Especially when I feel like LGD, I mean, LGD opted into that in my mind with unfavorable positions. Having your bot lane separated from your mid and jungle, it opened up for an easy access for EDG to get in there. So LGD find one, which is nice, but like you said, EDG picking up the dragon, denying waves now in bot like we just saw is what's important. But here, wanted to go for the pick, thinking that the Maokai separated, but look, it, it opens you up for this Moonlight Vigil to come out. Boko to flash forward. Hai Chao, sure he's going to have some threat on the back line, but I feel like the fact that the damage has already been done, and that leaves you in this kind of discriminating position. Uh, EDG are going to take it. So many summoners burnt by both sides. But at the end of the day, it's EDG who come out on top. Leave not having to burn his flash. Fofo's not even up in that exchange. Coming up now. So, look at flash on the side of LGD being burnt across the board. So, you take the summoners, you take the dragon. You take the fact that you 2,000 gold behind, but have got some time to play with here. Especially for your Belios. Tower plate is going down in 30 seconds. LGD. Look at what they've taken here in this game, though. 10 CS lead with mid, plus the plate. By two plates there as well, even though they're down on CS. And top, got the Herald charge and a plate himself. So, LGD, if they played their early game like this, dude, this team would be top of the, top of the standings if they played the rest of the game exactly the same way. It would be it would be phenomenal. Uh, now they haven't. The one place we have seen is what they're trying to do now. They haven't really been able to put too much pressure on Foco. He's played around the mid jungle incredibly well to make sure that he doesn't go down. It's been LGD utilizing that in other areas that have managed to get the kills. But uh, I also want to highlight some of the items. Top lane, that's ah, whatever. They both have flashes. If either of them die, they are just bad. As meteor, oh, poor out. Jed Jed just takes him. He was walking towards mid, and I think he made a boo-boo. Not accounting for EDG's bot lane, I guess, rotating up and being able to answer that, giving JJ and Fofo the strength and the confidence to be able to work for that pick. But Bloodthirster being picked up by Lee first item, so wanting to go with that sustain, make sure he doesn't get poked down or whittled out too much. Really can just survive the laning phase when LPC is going to have a ton of sustain to play with himself between the Immortal Shield bow and the Serac healing. So we're gonna have a lot of uptime in these bot lanes where, you know, recalls don't necessarily need to come out. With two minutes till the dragon, 15 seconds till Herald. And a lot of time to start watching these items flood in as well. Both folks should be doing the same here with the back. Uh, opted in for the tier and long sword. And even gonna be stopped there by High Chow, who's not giving him a moment to spare. Top lane really might nice. be whatever, but Xiao Xu's a beast. Sorry, what is nice? The fact that like they're preventing Fofo to back because uh, mm -hmm. we already have Ludens done by Haichao. So you're you know, oh, yeah. you have an item power spike uh, in play to be able to prevent a Herald contest from coming through. So we can see even on the minimap now, keeps using the distortion in, actually just got Fofo to half HP to, to make sure that they can guarantee this objective. So very much LGD's like laners are, are on the same page of, of what the call is and they know what their job is to make sure that this objective goes over. And again that setup from a, a you know a middling team. It doesn't look meddling at all. It's quite a big skill to develop. For LGD, that pacing of the game is real good here with the second Herald with the ability to contest for this third dragon with Shashu about to solo this top lane turret. I'm just sad he went for Gore Drinker Lyric. Now this is a prowler's Chad game to play full side lane, but I guess he knows his role in the team. Yeah, and like I said, I think it's kind of doubling down on the fact you have a Soraka, you have a Gore Drinker, like, you're going to be able to potentially stay in these fights for extended yeah. periods of time and really serve as, as that capable frontline for your Varus to be able to unload. So, now getting to a point with Dragon coming up in 30 seconds. Luckily, uh, for LG, look at the flash cooldowns. LPC is going to be up soon. Meteor is going to be up soon. So, they've kind of survived that, that wiggle room of where maybe EDG could have force. But EDG will be the team that are on the objective first. We're going to be looking at Fofo and how he manages to put them post before LGD can potentially walk into contest this objective. This Herald comes down, 15 seconds, timing perfect again. Bots up to Xiao Xu, sitting on a blast cone it looks like, just waiting to hop over and get the flank down. As JJ rolls in, he's got that ulti up available and that's what we'll watch for, but Xiao Xu's already started up, no dominance yet, but he's going to have to pop it. It's now into the flash, rather, he comes through. Through healing 
Again, great stuff. Michael slices himself onto Bobo. The assassination from the mid laner. Everything's down now, though. Is uh, she's gonna be Jin Zhao without the wish, but still with a bit of actual infusion. Ulti land max LPC. range, but Infernal doesn't do too much. Delphi D followed out by Arlo with the help of Jed Jeff. A bit of salt on top, and EDG have numbers advantage around Dragon for now with health bar advantage. And LG back away. That was a really messy one. So many small skirmishes going on around each side of the fight. EDG, like you said, managed to come out on top at the end of the day, and it will give them second break in their favor. So we're gonna see here, because I thought they really bad for LG to start things off with Shaoshu. Going in so much earlier than the rest of his team, they do manage to buy space with the Jarvis able to follow up. And, okay, Popo's gonna go down here to high chat, but I'm more interested in the rest of the fight. And how it goes over is so one-sided. Moonlight is just a bunch of damage, and it's here where Meteor gets locked up. And LPC being left on his lonesome, able to get soloed out by Allah. I don't know if it was the Maokai ult that was able to like help land the assist and make sure that, that that one goes through, but... We've now seen two games in a row where fights get so crazy, so hectic, and teams kind of tunnel in on the engage and catching out the, the key carries on the other side, that they leave their own carries just, just fodder to be taken down. As usual, this series has shown quite a bit, but High Chow with a 2-0 from the back of the fight. It's looking nice. ADG is setting up this reserve to zoom out because they're like, hang on a minute. The rest of the team's coming through. There's an Nature's Grass on four members that can fly. Jin Zhao hides behind his front line and Meteor's just been stunned up. Does he ever want to move again? As he gets Cataclysm down, Tippers misses the mark and Mako's just dead. Bit of a whiff here. It's Arla. Ooh. Speaking of whiffs, that man literally flew the wrong course, the wrong direction. And EDG, again, what was that? I think you can see just how much pressure Allah's been under this series, right? Like, going for an ult like that, like you said, the angle's kind of off. He's incredibly late to it as well. It, it just, I don't even know how, from, like, from his perspective, how I think it, it, it would land, but at the same time, Game one and game two, taking a heavy beatdown. He's 1-0 up right now, but still taking an early beatdown in lane this time. So I think feeling an immense amount of pressure in this game to try to make something happen for EDG. As we see here, the pick comes out, and you're right. The CC <laughs> chain on, on Meteor, man, this guy wasn't going anywhere. Didn't even have a flag to drag from in that situation. This flag up chain is what finishes off Mako. And Ala wanting to find it here. Yeah, kind of just going a bit too far forward. Actually, seeing in the replay it slowed down, you, you can see what he thought he was going for on, yeah. on LPC. So I think, you know, a little bit less outrageous. And like we said, wanting to be the one to find that big play because LPC doesn't have flash. And they know that from the last fight. It's just been top tip the whole series, though. Regardless of what you think about Arlo, regardless of what we can see is the, the thought. Shaoshu has been the better top laner through lane, through team fighting in, in all three games. It feels like we're, you know, just seeing a, a new top lane developing while an old one is just struggling a little bit here in the series. EDG, speaking of struggling, <laughs> I mean, their down gold is, uh, we were just talking about him, Flash is available. Flash is available and Arla doesn't have his. There we go, Ruthless Predator. Cull the damn weak ball like it, but safe. Leaf comes in and Shaoshu can't get the final hit. But the fact that it was close yet again, Arla is just not in for a good time. Getting run down by the Renekton. I will say for Shaoshu, he has a much harder job this time around in team fights compared to the last two games where the Cassante has things like the Ghost, all the dashes to get involved in the fight. Uh, this time around, it is going to depend more on the setup, more on his team, more on like him finding flanks and being able to get on the key members. But LGD is going to start out of bed. They're going to have to run in blind though because look at the vision and all control. LGD, they start this up, EDG have an idea, and especially with Bofo scanning it out, they'll know now, but with Nature's Grass coming through, LGD just back off, ulti committed, they get a lockdown, they get the poke, but they can't get in range, EDG stop the Baron, but LGD again, they can just continue this whenever they want, they've got a Soraka. Their Baron, not incredibly fast at those we just saw, so I think more trying to bait, bait someone into check and maybe sit up for High Chow to find a bit of a pick. High Chow even still waiting in the wings looking for something, as maybe now finally it looks like he's just gonna go push out this top wave. But Dragon coming up in 45 seconds. You can see LGD already getting control of bot side with their Renekton. So it sets them up now for, I think, Meteor and Jinja to move over and start getting some wards uh, set up for this objective. 4,000 still the lead. Dragon, 30 seconds. 
And will GD fit second items here on AD mid? Uh, jungle's got a war mogs first. Gotta love it. Again, we saw this the other day with Sedge. A lot more players just deciding that war mogs is first item, especially with how the bonus health works now. It's just great. As I want to point out, Lyric, with this second dragon, or oh, sorry, fourth dragon in the game, LGD are here in River First City. You have to burn the TP to get into action and at least try and make the contest. We can see, again, look at the sideways setup already coming out from LGD. L uh, High Shard just pushing out that far wave. EDG knowing they don't have position on Drake. Have to go for pushing out mid. But now with Shaoshu separated from the fight, EDG might have a window. At 5k, it starts getting chunked out. High Chow's an angle is a threat. Shaoshu coming in gets poked out. But look, speaking of angles, I mean, LGD are pulling many. Meteor goes in. It's stolen, actually. Meteor sacrificed a lot of his health bar, too. The Cataclysm doesn't set up for LGD's counter punch, and EDG get away with murder the second time in this series with a crazy dragon and still. Yep, that's two for two for JJ. Really being on point with these smites gets going, and now having pressure in mid, Meganar is up, they can just start whittling down at the turret, and LGD not going to be able to answer. Look at how low LPC is. Just have to give that one up for free. I think a lot of that being down to in the previous dragon kind of entanglement. One, Shashu can't get in the fight. Two, Hai Chao not able to connect any chains or, or any meaningful damage. Just can't believe EDG again facing down the barrel of another great dragon soul here. Cloud with Aphelios. Mmm, yum, 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 yum. Okay, replay time, Lyric. This was oh, here. a walk up and take it. Yeah, we saw High Shout jump over. He can't connect with anything. Like, the root comes down. It looks like actually getting stunned. I think it was by Mako. Meteor got locked, locked down. Smite comes out from JJ as well. Like, just winning out on that front. And now, getting them in a good position. Look at JJ. Two items strong. Matching Fofo as well in the mid lane. These are members who were potentially starting to fall behind their counterparts earlier on. Are still down in gold. But... At least able to match with those pivotal spikes. Looks like gold being up elsewhere. As you can see, people like Shaoshi being up over Ala. Yeah. Uh, even in that bot lane, leave actually a tremendous amount of CS above LPC. True. Been playing it since the lane. LPC relied on the places found in lane. But now, as we get back towards Baron, just note that Jet Jet has gone Night Harvester. It's still an AP Malkai, which you don't see much anymore. So. His ulti needs to come through, it needs to come through fast, but it will hurt. The CP from the side, LGD have unfathomably found themselves in a good position in Baron, but Jet is now running in. At 4k, they keep it tangled in, but Meteor underneath takes the debuff, takes the damage. They're still autoing it for the time being at 4.2k. The poke onto Jin Zhao. Fofo hits that little narrow mark, and Jin Zhao's taking down low. Arla's even going to find him on the wing. He hops over. He knows he's there. Great warning from EDG and Arla. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Hai Chow now has to rely on his poke in the backside because EDG are going to turn for this. His ulti in his flash is janky from Meteor, but he still finds one onto LBC. The twist and fan follows through. LGD have walked into a trap. Xiao Tzu's going to die. Meteor's going to die. And Arla, mm. where have you been this series? As a member that we've heavily criticized his performance, great step up by him to take the team fight and make sure that EDG secure this Baron. I mean, they've been in a gold deficit this whole game. Finally gonna be up in gold. Finally gonna have some pressure on the map and all of it coming from here. First off, nice poke coming out from Fofo to get them in this position, but then Ala with the wraparound takes out Jin Zhao, realizing the Meganar is up, and then just starts to run these members of LTD down. LPC thinking to regret taking those few steps forward in that one, and then Ala jumps in, finds the Nar, gets him knocked into the wall, and it buys enough time for members like JJ to go the flash forward, lock him down with an advance, and the other members of EDG to just barrel forward and clean up. God, it's got to feel good when, again, you're right, we've been criticizing him all series long, but Arl has been criticizing many other series as well. I think if we look at EDG members and people that have failed to hit the mark in previous games, the one that comes to mind for me first is Arla. Uh, I've yep. been looking at, you know, many, many different players, and I, I think Mako's been consistent. I think Lee's been hitting huge Look, ceilings. Both has been super consistent. Ala runs the cleaning service. The cleaning service oh, yeah. doesn't open until, I think it's, I think it was 7, you know, about 7.30 p.m. China time oh, yeah. right now. So it opens at 7. It's supposed to open. Okay. 
leave. Unfortunately, he runs a different kind of business. This guy's a dentist. Look at how clean he gets out as he wants to use Zephyrum yet again. The Wish fly through, helps shout through. But now Meteor's in amongst the whole team. Arla about to go into Meganar. Run away from this man. This JJ picks up kill credit and Jinjo gets slow thanks to a bit of a star call, but as Hightail flies in, Fofo narrowly avoids out. Chain's not gonna connect. Poke does though from EDG. And they are running down mid. I mean, this is a relentless pursuit. They've just gotten out of bed. Brush their teeth and here we go. They're not separating the whites from the colors. Everything's getting mixed and matched. They don't know what's going on. And at the end of the day, when you don't separate the colors from the whites, which will just be real, no one does that anymore anyway. No, uh, no, that's true, that's point true. is, when you don't do that, EDG get guaranteed and lock the playoff spot because this game is just faster and faster looking like it is EDG's. Now we need to be able to pick up Cloud Soul on their end. And I mean, it's one of those things, right? When, when you are a lower tier team, like great from LTV in their early game. And they, they've shown they can play out from an advantage. Playing out from behind, especially when you're running like things like LeBlanc, like a Jarvan, like a Renekton, is a different beast. Ooh. Hi Chow? Maiko Ooh. almost caught out. He had to flash, he had to heal. Hi Chow is still a threat. Hi Chow, I mean, he really doesn't have to be the one flipping zone. In fact, finding those like clever angles that LeBlanc can by being able to traverse terrain, chunk people out and potentially find a pick. But it's gonna be so hard. Because, again, like, leave. I mean, Bloodthirster, you see how much people love it these days. The shield uh, that you get absolutely insane. You'll be able to do a large job of preventing that first. We have Hex Drinker being picked up by Fopo. So a lot of these key cares, Wits End on Ala. Like, yeah. they realize that Hai Chow is the saving grace. Well, he's going to be the target here with the Twisted Advance and Maker running up. That stun down is going to be on the real one in the end as he tries to play it cool. But Mako picking that up. EDG on an onslaught of terror. Four members down plus. Both those sitting in the side lane. In is going to go down next. I mean, Lyric, there was so much standing gold. LGD in this game in their peak were up almost 5,000. Now EDG are up six. EDG doing a great job in finding the comeback. And now uh, a little bit of Megan Art left. I don't know. Game, game one, still a little bit dicey, but still a good. Game two, they were not there. And this time, they capitalized once. Xiaoxu. We've seen Xiaoxu be a menace, and I want to continue to see Xiaoxu be a menace. But can he get much done? I mean, Arla's, uh, rather, Fofo's already away, and he just wraps back around. Next wave will be coming in shortly. And in a turret up for the taking as double in hip now down. Oh, that oh. TP. That's <laughs> that TP in Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Haichao going? Where is the White Witch's castle? I mean, he's going to fly in. Mako's at risk here as he's back in a front oh, on a control it. ward. Yep, now Hadley Doodley. You know who's the, what, what uh, TP I remember the most from last year? I don't even know if it was last I think it was last year. Last year was WE Mole, right? Or was that the year oh, before? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, remember the, think, the, the yeah. set one at the start of the year. Oh yeah! Do you remember that? Two TPs into like enemy jungle when they're pushing when they're pushing inhibitors. Yeah, oh, you just God. need to get back before the, the game's <laughs> no. coming. I don't think. No, 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 no. I love oh. me some mole, but that was that was like I don't, that was like negative four D check. He was thinking like so many steps ahead that he was thinking behind. Oh God! I remember some of the greatest players in this league. You know the golden Y fours as we had it. And the golden names now what they're called? Oh, uh, that's right. We're not calling the golden white force because it was based off of white force um, tempered fate on Bard. If we don't work the last week together, we don't get to do the golden ricks. Uh, oh my no. god, we don't get to do the golden ricks. Uh, <laughs> I'm changing the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure I'm joking at this point. A DDG. Look, neither are they. The wish comes out. Xiao Xu is dead though, and guys. This was a scuffed series. It was a messy one. It was crazy. But all that remains is the truth. EDG as they barrel in with triple inhibitor down as they look for the final fight. Are looking for their lock-in to play off this leave. Just hits the back line. He's had a quiet one, but now sitting with three items strong. This man takes over. It's a Felios time. Sitting in front of the fountain. It's all his game now as Edward Gaming may not be cleaning this clean in the series, but they're still one of the best teams. They've still got a lot to prove here, and they will still lock in playoffs. Our second team to do it in 2023 spring. You hit it. It was messy. It was it was a series that made you question like how this team has been on such a run 
but still, I think it is a very undervalued skill by like the community at large, not not just fans, but you know, whether casters, coaches, fans, pundits, whatever, of like being able to to fall behind and be in a game that you potentially should lose, but be able to keep it cool, wait for your moments, and be able to come back and win strong. That is a that is a hard skill to be able to, to even practice, right? Because typically, like yeah. in scrims, you're focusing on like like how to how to finish games if you have leads, or like why you fell behind early, and how to prevent that.